This is a touchy subject. Today we're exploring touch screens, why you might want one, how to install it, and everything else you need to know. Our test subjects will be these two Boron inspired Trudon 2.0s. Our friend May is running RepRap firmware, while her brother Talos is running Clipper. Some of this content will be specific to these machines, but most of the information presented here will be broadly applicable to RepRap and Clipper based machines. In this video, I'll cover the setup and installation of a touchscreen in RepRap firmware. If you're a Clipper user, get subscribed and stay tuned for part two, in which I'll cover Clipper screen. These printers come stock with a standard LCD screen, the kind that requires a rotary encoder knob to navigate. While technically fine, the ease of use leaves a lot to be desired. Most users will prefer to interact with their printers through the web interface, whether that be Duet Web Control in RepRap firmware or Mainsail slash Fluid in Clipper. The reason being that it is easier to navigate with more options available to us. We can easily access our macros, monitor a print job, and call an emergency stop if so required. Some of these tasks can be accomplished with the stock LCD, but not all. This is where touch screens come in. These allow you to access nearly every aspect of the printer's operation in a convenient to use way. With one of these installed, you'll likely only find yourself visiting the web interface for tasks like firmware updating or configuration. So now that you're convinced, let's see what's involved in the installation. Today's focus is RepRap firmware, but I'll soon demonstrate the process in Clipper as well. The more I work with these environments, the more intrigued I am by how they compare and contrast. The biggest difference right away is compatibility. A screen that is compatible with Clipper isn't necessarily compatible with RepRap, and vice versa. In RepRap, we'll be using the Panel 2. This screen was originally developed by Duet 3D, the same company that makes Duet control boards and maintains the main branch of RepRap firmware. I'll be using a clone Panel 2 from Fiztech, Fiztech, however you pronounce it. This screen is available in both 5 and 7 inch sizes. The former will be more space efficient and cost effective, which is why I opted to use the 5 inch version. To begin the installation, we'll first need to remove the stock LCD. One screw and two plugs and it's history. The screen requires four inputs, power, ground, and two logic pins for sending and receiving data. All of these connections can be found on the EXP headers that supplied the original LCD. We could open up the printer and make these connections directly, but that would require cutting and crimping the ends of the supplied wire. Instead, I'll be opting for the quick and dirty method. I'll be using DuPont jumper wires to make the connections between the stock LCD ribbon cables and the 4-pin connector that feeds to the panel do. It may not be the best way, but it won't require any crimping, and given that the wires are stationary, I'm not concerned about them getting disconnected. We'll get ground and power from EXP1, the black cable, and the two control pins from EXP2, the gray cable. To keep it simple, I've color-coded the jumper wires to match the supplied cable. I'll indicate the necessary connections on screen, so feel free to pause the video and take a closer look. Some electrical tape will keep the wires in place and prevent them from disconnecting. We'll then plug the connector into the screen and feed the wires back into the base of the printer. Next up is firmware configuration. Open the web interface, go to the system tab, and open board.txt. Under external display settings, change no pin to PD9 for the receive pin and PD8 for the transmit pin. Then comment out all of the lines below that reference the mini 12864 display. When prompted to apply the new configuration, you can click cancel for now. We'll restart the printer at the end, which will cause all changes to take effect. Next, open config.g and comment the line that loads the screen configuration file, replacing it instead with a new line that specifies the baud rate for serial communication with the panel do. With that done, save the file and restart the mainboard. Upon reboot, you'll be greeted by a Duet 3D splash screen, followed by the home screen with various buttons. A quick tap of the home button confirms that the screen is controlling the printer. So that's all well and good. But we're not just going to let the screen hang there, are we? Of course not. Let's put my design skills to work and whip up a mount for this thing. This looks like it should do the trick. 
a few heat set inserts, and it's ready to mount on the printer. Two M3x16 socket head screws will hold the mount in place. We could leave it at that, but let's spice things up a little. The custom bezel slips over the screen, and the whole thing is held in place with four M3x8s. A quick test of clearance for the doors, and we'll call that a success. After poking around the menus a bit, I noticed that the screen firmware was considerably out of date. In order to update it, we'll first need to press the erase button on the rear of the screen, followed by the reset button. Note that the screen will become temporarily unresponsive. You can download the latest firmware version from the link in the description. Choose the one that matches your screen, using this table as reference. Upload it using the Upload System Files button in the system menu, then navigate to the firmware directory. Locate the file you uploaded, right click it, and select Install Firmware File. If all goes according to plan, the screen should reboot and prompt you to calibrate the touch points before landing on the home screen. So that's it for the setup. Now let's take it for a test drive. The screen will allow us to home the printer, heat it, run macros, initiate print jobs, baby step our first layer, be notified of status events, and much more. So there you have it, a touch screen on the Trudon 2.0 running RepRap firmware. This is one of the best quality of life upgrades I can recommend for this printer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. You can find the files I designed for the mountain and bezel on the digital downloads page of YGK3D.com. Alternatively, join me on Patreon to help support the channel and for access to these files and many more, including a growing catalog of high quality 3D models that are optimized for sale. Please subscribe and stay tuned for part two when I cover this process in Clipper. My name is Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.